last time we finally fully finished up the main Factorio factory. And we took a look at all of the achievements we still need to complete. One of them stands out as the obvious candidate to work towards first. And while there indeed are some much easier achievements to achieve, 20 million green chips is clearly gonna be the bottleneck of the whole playthrough. So we first gotta do some work to set this peaceful achievement in motion a bit. Well, peaceful. After investigating the map, the best area to set it up seems to be in the northwestern corner of the explored map. There's lots and lots of iron and copper patches, but also lots and lots of biters. So a spider band's gotta do what a spider band's gotta do once more. But first we do some peaceful exploring, sneaking between the biter bases to find out what lies beyond the high density resource cluster area. But all we find beyond is a high density biter cluster area. Anyway, physical damage upgrade 6 completes, and while damage 5 was kind of a letdown, damage 6 is actually a significant difference. Just look how fast the gun turrets can take down behemoth biters now. This big nest here is as difficult as combat is gonna get until we meet naturally spawned behemoth worms in distant nests far away from spawn. Anyway, we still need to explore and clear much more land to access the further away patches. And while we could start preparing to utilize these nearby couple patches, as they are nicely surrounded by forests to help keep pollution in check, I first want to get the bigger picture and clear out all the land we need to see just how many resources we have to work with before we start design work on the 20 million green chip setup. But we do need to make a small intermission in our kill spree, so we can actually operate the massive infrastructure later. Because the first step towards a large base is a large power plant. We are gonna need nuclear power, so we set up an early uranium mine to start generating the stuff to fuel that nuclear power plant in the future. And the future is now, so once we centrifuged our first handful of uranium-235... We can go ahead and fuel the reactors. while the bots install the rest of the facility. And 
And yes, I'm again reusing my old blueprint of the 100% fuel efficient nuclear power plant. I know that with a little more advanced wiring also involving the outserter, the whole belting is unnecessary. But sue me, I just like to see the shiny fuel cells go brrrr on the belts. Anyway, I hereby promise that in my next series I will design all my nuclear plants by hand, without using my own blueprints. A promise that's gonna be easy to keep, as none of my designs will physically fit in Warptorium. Anyway, as our current power draw isn't even 10% of this reactor's 480 megawatts max capacity, even these few fuel cells are gonna last a very long time. And actually, this time we're gonna save even more fuel than usual, because we are still running on our 1000 solar panels during the daytime, which means each fuel cell will easily last more than an hour, instead of the usual 200 seconds it would last in an unregulated nuclear power plant. Anyway, back to bullying behemoth biters. We need to find out the lay of the land beyond all these shiny iron and copper patches. And after a ruthless and utterly dominating kill spree, well, it looks like there's a giant waterfront behind these resources. That's both good and bad news. It's good news in that the biters cannot cross over the water from beyond, but it's bad news because the pollution from the mines will easily spread over the unforested desert and water, causing unreachable biters from beyond the seas to part towards my base around the water, and probably cluster into heavy attacks in a small bottleneck of land. During our kill spree, we reach 1 million green chips. Perhaps we don't even need to expand to get the 20 million then, eh? Well, unfortunately we do. Not only would the required playtime extrapolate to a whopping 666 hours, we'd also run our resource patches dry long before making a dent in the 20 million chips we need. Expansion is inevitable. And 33 hours into the game, I think we cleared all the land we need for now. We are gonna build our 20 million green chip producing setup smack in the middle of this giant resource cluster field. But there's a problem. For a project this size, we are gonna need massive amounts of machinery, literal thousands of miners, furnaces and assemblers, which all need to be supplied and powered somehow. So this is the point in the game where hand crafting and hand feeding has reached its limit. I will have to concede. It is finally time to set up a mall. So with this giant Gordian knot of Spaghetti Atelle Extraordinaire, which seems to contain more splitters and underground belts than actual normal belts, we somehow split off the correct ingredients to make miners and manufacturing machines. A sneaky splitter makes sure we'll make about two miners for every assembly machine too in times of resource shortness, which is close enough to the ratio we need. We then add power poles to the setup, which need a bit of copper. There's really no way to neatly draw that off the bus anymore, so we simply pluck it off the bus with a long-handed inserter. We want to keep their production speed limited anyway, so they don't steal all the steel from the blue von Neumann assembler making copies of itself. 
We're also gonna need thousands of inserters in all three colors. And while we have yellow inserters automated at green signs, it is just simpler to re-automate them here and have everything available at a central location without possibly starving green science production. So let's immediately contradict my own logic by semi-automating red underground belts and splitters, but not the red belts themselves. The new logic being, I still have thousands of red belts in stock, so I want my resources to flow into the stuff I actually don't have in stock yet. I then even further contradict my own logic by just accumulating electric furnaces in a chest at purple signs. And despite trying really hard, I ran out of excuses to make some sort of justification for it. Well, it'll do anyway, I guess. The only bulk necessity we won't automate is efficiency modules. We can simply make up to 3200 efficiency modules at a time by a quick minute of hand feeding 16,000 red chips and 16,000 green chips in our OG assembly area. Nice! Well, since the achievement is only about producing 20 million green chips, we won't be consuming them into something useful. So we will also need roughly 2,000 steel chests to store all those useless green chips. But why are we automating gun turrets? That doesn't seem to make any sense. Well... While Spidertron is great in clearing out all the biters from our plot of land, it isn't all that useful in keeping them out. At 100% evolution, biter expansion is brutal, with them forming a new biter nest every 4 minutes. That's 15 expansions per hour, and we're gonna be here for a lot of hours still. So with literal hundreds of expansions to deal with, the biters will quickly take over all cleared land again. We need an automated way to stop that enemy expansion from happening. Now, do you remember how well our gun turrets did against behemoth biters after we got the last ammo damage upgrade? Well, they will do even better with uranium ammo, which does a whopping 3 times the raw damage output, quadrupling the effective damage against the heavily armored behemoth biters. And with a minigun-like shooting speed of 25 bullets per second, an individual gun turret with uranium ammo will be capable of 3000 damage per second, which is far higher than any other turret in the game. Okay, so while that all is true, gun turrets also have three major shortcomings compared to laser turrets and flamethrowers. They only have 400 hit points as opposed to 1000 for the flamethrowers and lasers, which means they are easily destroyed by only a few blobs of acid from behemoth spitters if they can get their shots in. And they often will get their shots in, as the gun turret's range is only 18 compared to the behemoth spitter's 16 range. That means, even with the gun turret's insane DPS, the second or so the gun turret is distracted killing the fast incoming behemoth biters, is often enough time for the behemoth spitters to get a shot in. Compared to the 25 range of a laser turret, lasers have way more time to shoot incoming enemies before being in danger, and the flamethrower turrets with its 30 range can be built with a wall so far out that the behemoth spitter won't be able to come close enough to target the flamethrower at all, as I showcased in the ultimate Death World challenge. Anyway, the real reason to go for gun turrets with uranium ammo is that I just want to showcase them in this playthrough, while still keeping in line a bit with the spirit of the raining bullets achievement, without utilizing any flamethrowers or laser turrets. I also won't be expecting any heavy pollution based attacks, or so I hope, because we are going to forego the usual endgame setup of productivity tree assemblers surrounded by speed tree beacons. Those are great for resource efficient megabases, but they are also insanely polluting, and for us, pollution will remain something to worry about for the rest of the game. So our strategy is going to be to put efficiency modules in not only the miners, but in everything including the electric furnaces and assembly machines. 
That way, even though we are aiming for a massive green chip production in the range of 10 to 20 full red bells of green chips, we are still clinging on to the hope that pollution output will remain low enough to not trigger giant biter attacks. And that should save us from the third drawback of the gun turrets, which is the resource cost of the ammo. Where laser turrets are basically free with nuclear power, and flamethrowers consume minimal oil for massive area of effect damage, the bullets needed for gun turrets are straight up expensive in any stage of the game. But that's the point of the efficiency modules. We are not building a defense for pollution based attacks. We are just building a border wall to stop illegal biter immigrants from settling the land we took from them. Wait, we are the bad guy here, aren't we? <coughs> anyway, theoretically, or rather I should say optimistically, the only biters we plan to spend our expensive ammo on are the groups of the up to 20 biters which will try to cross into our lands up to 15 times per hour. Compared to defending a high pollution base from biter attacks, that's basically peanuts. Uranium peanuts, in this case. Well, we'll have to see if that will work out like I think it will. Well, with our base mostly finished and with the mall in process of producing, let's start tracking some achievements. We optimistically opt to track progress for the 20 million green chip achievement already, as well as tech maniac which we are pretty close to completing. We also opt to follow Steamrolled, but there's a slight problem with that one. Which problem? Well, Spidertron cannot steamroll anything. He is basically the dark matter of Factorio. He doesn't directly interact with anything, yet his presence is still of great influence on the biters in the Factorio universe. No, to actually steam roll anything, we are going to need something which rolls. Like a tank. We then prepare to head out and go and build the first anti-biter expansion wall and collect all the stuff we need to build it. I'll come back off camp to collect the other all, like belts and inserters I guess. We also promptly forget about the steamroll plan for the next several hours, but since we're already proudly following the steamroll achievement progress on screen, I figure I should at least mention it. Anyway, it is time to wall. We are going for only a light defense, fed by long handed inserters which should keep my weak bells and inserters from getting wrecked by collateral damage from behemoth spitter spit. We may lose a gun turret, but the supply system must keep operating. Soon the half density line of gun turrets is in place and we're ready for a defense test. We spot a new enemy expansion and draw its inhabitants down to our wall. The single behemoth biter and his following of a small sample of squishy spitters is easily dealt with. So let's gather something more serious. Yeah, that's more like it. After a bit of tactical sheep herding to organize the group, we lead them into the wall head on in the worst possible configuration, with the tanky behemoth biters distracting the gun turrets from the ranged spitters. While there is some damage to the wall, this was an oversized group 
well over 50 enemies large. The maximum expansion group is 20 enemies large, so I think we can call it a success. As we will supply only a limited amount of ammo to each individual wall segment, we prevent the ammo from clumping up on the belt by using this slow inserter to redistribute the ammo at fixed intervals. Since we are hopefully dealing with only the occasional expansion group trying to force through, the low throughput should cause no problems. We can only carry so much with us, so once we run out of building materials, we head back to the base to resupply. But on the way back up to the wall, we find an unwelcome surprise. New biter nests have already expanded quite a distance away from the previously cleared area, and there are multiple bases within our planned wall again. Well, at least this shows we really do need that wall we're building. On the way up we also plop down a few solar powered radars next to the lake, so we can slowly and peacefully explore the lands beyond the lake. We then spot an actual enemy expansion in progress, and we can see the assembled biter group slowly transform themselves into worms and nests. Well, until my solar powered radar cuts out in the night time. Soon though, the northwest corner is fully walled off. We can see the end result of that enemy expansion, forming two spawners and a handful of worms. The enemy expansion chunk candidates now extend firmly on our side of the wall. But should one of those chunks be selected for biter expansions, they will try to cross our anti-expansion wall, which hopefully means they will fail to reach the expansion location, due to being dead. They could still reach it from the unwalled right side though, so it's time to rain down some more destruction on the biters, in an effort to find the best location for our eastern wall. And man, with all damage upgrades finally researched, we are just melting through these nests at an incredible pace. But after all that monotonous eradicating and erecting, a sudden surge of achievement hunting grave finally gets the best of me. And we interrupt our biter exterminating wall building mission to hunt down some achievements. We are not going to be expanding our main base anymore, but we are still missing the red and blue chips achievement. Rather than just being a blunt total production goal, these are both hourly production goals, and as it turns out, our current setup is just not capable of achieving these. I had already switched off research and blue chip production a while ago to increase resource flow to red chips, hoping that it be enough. But even with all red chip assemblers running continuously, we have been producing only 21k red chips per hour. That means the assembler speed is the current bottleneck keeping us from the achievement. No problem. Now with nuclear power available, we can just upgrade to the assembly machine Mark III and enjoy its 66% speed increase. But there's always a new bottleneck, and this time it's the speed of the red belts, which caps the red chip production at 450 per hour. So we double the plastic build, and double the input belt to feed the red chip setup. Now that everything is up and running at full speed, all we need to do is wait for the achievement. We can then give the same treatment to blue chips. But we will wait until after we get the red chips achievement. I don't think we have the green chip resource flow to attempt both at the same time. Uh, 
In fact, why not upgrade the whole base to the tier 3 assembler while we wait for the red chip achievement? And there it is. Now we will switch focus on blue chip production. By putting green chip output priority away from red chips instead of towards it. We then clear out space for 8000 new blue chips in our buffer chests, so blue chip production can start off in full swing. For the achievement we need to produce 5000 blue chips in one hour. And a full red belt of green chips should be enough for 5400 blue chips per hour, or indeed 90 per minute. The only problem is we are not really producing a full belt of green chips, but we can pretend we can by using the 7 chests of previously stocked up chips to artificially increase production for a while. If all goes well, we should reach 5000 blue chips in 56 minutes, barely making the achievement. We also have been having oil shortage problems for a while now, so let's solve that once and for all by connecting two rich and distant oil fields to our poor dried up starter fields. That should be the last time we need to think about oil for the rest of the playthrough. Then it happens. Official medical proof that it's not me who's crazy, it's you. My anti-biter expansion wall intercepts the first biter expansion. There's dead bodies at the wall to prove it and everything. And of course, also the blinking green circle which confirms it was this chunk which was selected for biter expansion. It works! It works! <laughs> In fact, we can do a dramatic reenactment of what happened by loading the last save. The biters at this nest are idle. Suddenly they're called into action for the task of forming a biter expansion. Indeed, the green circle is blinking. And there they come, on their journey to the greener grass on my side of the wall. Well, sucks to be you, biters. <laughs> anyway, the grass is not greener on my side either. There's just more bare and deserted desert. That small success finally gives me the kick under my bottom that I needed to continue the wall. The 5k blue chips per hour achievement should complete by itself now anyway. And while we are trying to figure out how our diagonal anti-biter expansion wall should look while almost being ambushed by one of those biter expansions, the blue chip achievement completes. And we just barely made it, as the green chip belt isn't even fully filled anymore. That means we can safely start up researching again, re-diverting our limited resource intake towards science packs instead of red or blue chips again. I'm glad those red and blue chip achievements are out of the way. Normally you would get those achievements organically on the way towards building a mega base with an X science per minute goal. But we are not planning such a base. After getting all the text we need, we only care about that green chip producing base. So it's good we got them out of the way now. By the way, speaking of things being in the way, the east wall is almost up. And 
after we finish figuring out the diagonal blueprint. find a way to connect it to the orthogonal blueprint with some extra turrets on the weak outside corner. The second biter expansion plan gets thwarted. The kill stats show a group of 19 enemies were killed in action. Their intended destination was on our side of the lake. I have a feeling that's gonna be a popular holiday destination for the biters, and this is gonna be a busy border crossing. And one more diagonal wall later, the entire horseshoe wall is done. It's larger than it looks, and including the water border, there's only three more land sections in the far south where biters can expand up to the north. While we will need to wall that off eventually, I think they are far enough out so that we can finally start to work on the actual green chip infrastructure first, instead of the many security related issues. So, after spending another two hours of building mines, furnaces, assemblers and belts, we are finally ready to turn on our first quad belt green chip production setup, all powered through the single power pole. And after the furnaces sequentially light up the night with a warm, fuzzy glow. We connect their output belts to our quadruple green chip assembly line. where they will slowly start to fill the 480 cold empty steel hearts the chests uh, capable of storing almost 4.6 million green chips. <sighs> this setup is supplied by a giant 10 million iron mine and two copper mines totaling over 17 million. Basically what I'm saying is even if we just AFK'd for hundreds of hours and fully mined up these entire patches, 
That still wouldn't be enough to get the 20 million green chip achievement by far. Yeah, this achievement's production requirement is an order of magnitude larger than all of the other achievements combined. That's how out of line this achievement is. There's still a lot of work to do and a lot of problems to solve. While this initial green chip block and its mines are located comfortably far away from biter bases and nicely smack in the middle of some pollution absorbing forests, the majority of the projected ore patches are situated a whole lot less ideally. So if I'm wrong about the estimated pollution output against the very limited terrain pollution absorption capacity, biter attacks are going to escalate very quickly into unmanageable numbers for our super lightly defended walls. And we are going to be in big trouble. Next time.